You've probably seen a tree before, and in case you haven't, here's one. If you want to see a real tree, let me show you one. Here is a tree. Here is another tree, and even this is a tree. You have seen all of these examples before, whether it is an organizational structure, files on your computer, or even a classification of animals in a biology class. But if you look at all of these structures closely, you will notice some of the common elements. Every tree has a starting node, or how we call it, a root node. Root node acts as a parent, and it can have multiple children. And these children can also act as a parent and have their own children in return. The number of children depends on the type of tree, and it can be more than two or even none of them. If the node doesn't have any children, it's called a leaf node. We use trees mostly for modeling and reasoning. If you try to present the same data as a list or as a plain text, it's going to be pretty confusing, but you don't really have to explain to other people how trees work because it's pretty clear intuitively. If it's so intuitive, why do we need to know all of the elements of the tree? Well, by finding the rules, we're trying to define the rules, which in turn will help us to find some assumptions that we can make, which in turn will help us to find more efficient algorithms that we can use. Also, defining the elements helps us to understand which structures look like trees, but they're actually not trees, and some of them will surprise you. If you look at this structure, you see the Renting an apartment requires a valid visa and a proof of income, which in turn requires having a job, which in turn requires having a valid visa. If we try to show this structure in an abstract way, you will immediately see why the structure is not a graph. While the beginning looks like a valid subtree, adding having a job adds another hierarchical dependency. So a child is becoming a child of two parents, which is not allowed in the tree. Let's look at another example. Getting a job requires work experience, and work experience requires getting a job. That sounds familiar. But if we look at this from the point of the tree, we can see that one is depending on the other, creating a circular dependency between them, which means it's not a valid tree. And perhaps a surprising one, the family tree is not actually a tree. If you know why this structure is not a tree, leave it in the comments down below. Does it mean that this is not a valid data structure? No, it just means it's a more complicated one and you can subscribe to the channel to see another video about graphs. By now you're probably wondering how do trees look like? So let's get to the root of that problem. This is all of the code for the tree. The tree is basically a node that has a connection to another node. To illustrate this with a real life example, let's try to add this company hierarchy that we had before into our tree to see how it looks when it's done in the code. You can see that the only thing we're doing is adding more nodes, those objects of type node, and uh, just appending them as children to pre-existing nodes. And this is how you build a tree in the code. Knowing all of these rules, we can switch to the interesting part, which is algorithms. And the main one that you should know about if you're thinking about trees is a tree traversal, which is a very fancy name for walking the tree or how we like to call it, visiting the nodes of the tree. There are multiple types of tree traversals and they Probably easiest one to understand is a breadth first search, which is a bulky name for going level by level. The easiest life example of the breadth first search would be to giving salary raises to your employees if you start from the very top of the company hierarchy. So you start with the CEO, then you give raise to all of your managers, and then you give the salary raise to your employees if you still have any money left. Another way to traverse the tree would be depth first search. So you first go down to the bottom, uh, work with the nodes there and then you go sideways and up. The tricky part about the depth first search is that you can do it 
in several different ways. You can do it in the pre-order manner, which basically means that you go to the root node before visiting all of the children. An example for it would be the performance review of the company when you start with the manager and then you do all of the employees and then the employees of these employees. In computer science, you usually use pre-order traversal to copy the tree because first you copy the parent node and then you copy the children. And another way to traverse the tree would be the post order when you first visit the children and then you visit the parent. And example of this would be the performance review when you start with an employee, giving the review to your manager and then going up to the manager. In computer science, we usually use post order tree traversal to delete a graph because first you delete the leaf nodes and then you move on to the parent and then to the root node. And yet another way to traverse or to visit the tree is to go about it in a completely different way, but it only works for the binary trees. But to understand it, we need to first look at different types of trees. And let's start with the binary tree that I mentioned before. Binary tree is the easiest to understand because it basically means that each parent will have two children at most. It doesn't give us much on its own, but if you add another rule, you will get a binary search tree, which is an incredible data structure that is used everywhere. Binary search tree has one additional rule. All of the children on the left are smaller than the parent and all of the children on the right are bigger than the parent. So apart from making things more complicated, why does it matter? Well, if we apply this rule, we can do the binary search. Let's say we're looking for number 40. And we're going to start with a root node. Is 40 smaller or bigger? Well, 40 is smaller, so we're going to go left. Is 40 smaller or bigger than 30? Well, it's bigger, so we're going to go right. And we found 40. The idea of the binary tree is that every time you make a choice, you divide the tree in half, and you only work with the remainder of it. It may not seem like such a big deal on a small tree, but if you look at the tree like this, which is ginormous, you won't have to go through all of the nodes to find your uh, value. You would only have to go through basically the number of levels. Actually, that was my favorite trick as a child. I would take a book and try to find the page using binary search. I would open a book on some page and see if it was bigger or smaller than the page I wanted and use the left or the right part of the pages. I actually found it, but I didn't know I have to divide them in half. Oh, yeah. So I just divide them. In arbitrary order. Yeah. Like so I learned all the difficult lessons as a child. Speaking in computer science terms, you lower the complexity of the search from the linear complexity to a logarithmic complexity. Speaking in normal people terms, it's just way, way, way faster. So instead of going through, I don't know, how many is there? 50, 100? You only go through five levels. And this is the beauty of logarithmic complexity final way of traversing the tree that I mentioned before, and it is in order traversal. And the reason it only makes sense for the binary search tree is because it allows us to traverse the tree in a sorted order. When you look at the tree as a person, you're not really convinced it's sorted, but if you apply in order traversal, everything comes into places. The idea of the in order traversal is that instead of going parent, children, or children, parent, like we did before, you go left, top, right. And let's see how it actually looks in real life. So we go left, top, right. Top, left, top, right. Top, left, top, right, top, left, top right. And if you paid attention, you notice that every time I clicked on the note, it was in a sorted order. But all of these fancy algorithms won't help if you add children incorrectly. In other words, if the tree is not balanced. Unbalanced tree means that some of the branches of the tree are way longer than the other ones, which means that when you try to apply say, binary search, you will not divide your tree in half. You will just go on and on and on on the longest of branches. The good news is there are self-balancing trees, so they do balance itself and you don't have to think about it. The bad news is if you try to figure out how they do it, it gets very technical very fast. Uh, they rebalance on each insert and some of... What? Nothing. It's so technical. 
Yes, this is very technical. Are you gonna give real life examples? Of the balancing trees? Yes, like give for example why a phone book like we know in any other country doesn't work in Vietnam, for example. Because they all have the same last names? Indeed. 80% of the that. country has the same last name. This is an example of the unbalanced tree. And to make it balanced, we use something called rotations to make sure that our root is changed and the branches of the tree are the same length. To translate it into the normal language, you can think about the phone book in Vietnam, where 80% of the last names are the same. So dividing the phone book by the same way as we do by the first letter of the last name will not really work because you will spend a lot of time searching through this one last name. You might want to rebalance this phone book by some other rule, like for example, the first name. I've been talking about how we use trees in real life for this whole video, but how do we use trees in software? Well, there are so many ways that it's hard to name all of them. Trees are literally everywhere, from the website to file structure, to search and autocomplete, to decision tree in AI and machine learning, to syntax trees in compilers and interpreters. In fact, trees are used to parse the same programming languages that are used to build trees. Trees are really fascinating. It may seem like there are a lot of rules, but they do offer some stability and comfort because if you strip the rules, you're just ending up with a lot of graphs, which is a very interesting data structure, but it offers way more chaos. We don't acknowledge real trees in this video. Are you still recording? So like I'm sitting outside, which is new with another person, which is new and not, you know, in order which is <laughs> in order. Are you recording right now? I am so confused with directions. Is the mic still on? Yeah. So many ways that it's hard to name all of them. That's why I forgot all of them right now. That's why I have problems with microphones, not that I have bad microphones. Well, because I was like on the right, wait, it's going to be left, yeah. I think. I'm talking about trees because trees. Don't listen to her random <laughs> cool. Like and subscribe and I'll tell you something about my last name, the Graf. <laughs> Okay, that's actually funny.